Greetings, Pablo. It's Paul Greenshire Homestead. We've got our off-grid system installed, and it's exceeding my expectations. Well, I was hoping it would, and it does. Um, the reason I say that is um, I knew it was going to be a good, efficient system, but I didn't realize how well it was going to power the house on cloudy days with the solar. We've had solar for five years, and uh, we are taking in enough solar, even on cloudy days, not all the cloudy days, but today is a heavy cloud cover day. I'm going to take the camera out and show you just how heavy the cloud cover is. And yet we're taking in enough power to power the house, and yet have enough power left over that the solar panels are still uh, sending power into the batteries. They are full, and the, the solar panels keep, uh, are continuing to keep them topped off. And I'm very surprised by that, just how efficiently that's working. This is a 15K solar arc. And then this is the EG4 battery rack, and inside that battery rack, we then have the uh, six of the EG4 LL version 2 batteries. These reach 5.1 kilowatt for a total of 600 amp hours. The batteries slide into the, their, their individual little pigeonholes there, and then you take the uh, negative cable to the negative bus bar and a positive uh, cable you, you bolt to the positive bus bar. And then down at the bottom, we've got these big 4 aught cables. And those four aught cables then distribute the power from the bus bar over here to the solar, and they come in right here. So they're feeding direct current into the solar. This would be the solar array. We have 24 panels. We've broken those 24 panels into uh, three sections. So we've got eight panels coming into each of these three arrays right here. That's the uh, fan kicking on for the solar. It takes in air from the bottom and sends it out through the top to keep the internal workings at, at a, a temperature that is uh, preset by, by sol uh, solar. This would be the grid. So what we've got here is this would be grid feed. If I were to flip this breaker right here up, then we would be grid tied. We still have the grid. We've still got the transformer and the meter out there. We're just not using it. Um, I've got this off grid. And it, it's, it's been off-grid for the last 12 days. That's how long we've had this system in place. And I have no intention of, of reconnecting it to the grid. The only reason I have it there is I want to run through all four seasons off-grid to make sure that I've accounted for everything that can you know, go wrong. I think I have, but you know, until I'm actually in the real-world scenario, I want to make sure that everything's working very well. So this it would be the grid feed right here that you would have in your standard house. And normally it would come into the top of the breaker panel. This is just a normal breaker panel like every house would have. So it would feed all these breakers and send the load onto your house. Our grid connection just stops right there. It's just dead in the water right there. It's doing absolutely nothing. So this would be the, um, this is the feed, the AC feed coming out of the solar. You got DC feed coming in. And then the, the solar inverts the direct current power into alternating current power pure sine wave power, and it sends it through these cables, down through this wire way, through this conduit, and into the breaker panel, and then through the house. So that, that is the efficiency of how that works. Now the other thing we're going to incorporate is going to be a wind turbine. It's going to be a vertical wind turbine, not, not a big thing, and it's only going to be on a six-foot pole. Uh, that may not sound real efficient, but that's all we're going to need. We sit on a hill, and the pole is going to be mounted between the house and the shop, where it works kind of like a wind tunnel through there. I'll mount a, a charge controller on the wall here. We'll bring the wires in from the turbine into the charge controller, and then the charge controller wires will bolt, bolt up to the bus bar here, and it'll just keep the batteries full when, the char when it's spinning. It'll just be charging the batteries. When the batteries are full and it's still spinning, we're going to send that diversion load into the water heater, 50-gallon water heater. So the turbine will then heat the water in the water heater, and when that reaches 140 degrees, which is kind of the cap for a water heater, then it'll re uh, it'll redirect the power to a radiator which will be mounted outside the wall of the basement. So then that turbine as it's spinning will just heat the, the, uh, the heating element in that, in, in that uh, um, outside the basement. So the only other thing that we've got with this system is this little fellow here. It's about the size of a shoe box and that's the EG4 charge burner. It is able to charge up to 100 amps. But I don't like to run things at their, their max. So I'm going to set it for 60 amps. We've got a Cummins 13 kilowatt whole house generator sitting outside the wall here, and that's plumbed up to our 500 gallon water tank. And then we've run an outlet into the basement wall. So all I have to do is plug the EG4 charge burner into the outlet, 
set the uh, um, amps to charge at 60, uh, uh, set, you know, set it to charge at 60 amps, and then through the cables on the floor here that are bus, uh, bolted up to the bus bar, it then charges the batteries. Now I tested it one day just to make sure that it was working properly, and these batteries have a display on them that you can turn on, and it was running at 60 amps, and the batteries were all charging at 9.6, 9.7 amps. So I was very pleased about that. We didn't have some charging at 10 and some charging at 5. They were all charging within one or two percentage points of each other. So that told me how efficiently that was working, how efficiently the bus bars were distributing the power. So everything is working very, very well. I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, I'm going to be knocking out some videos on sp some specifics that you'll need to know. But I'm going to take the camera outside now and show you just how cloudy it is and yet we're still taking in enough power to keep the batteries topped off. So that's our cloud cover. Those are some pretty thick clouds, people. And yet, I, I'm not even exactly sure where the sun is because I can't even see where it is shining through the clouds. But that kind of a cloud cover right there. Our solar panels are over there behind the shop. I've shown you those in the past. Yeah, with this thick cloud cover, the batteries are full and continuing to charge, and all the loads in the house are being powered by those solar panels. So, pretty, pretty impressive, if, if you ask me. This is Paul at Greenshire signing off. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be doing some pretty good videos on uh, how to uh, program the batteries, the inverter, and that sort of thing, and I'll keep you posted.